Hey guys, my name is Jared. I figured I'd start making videos of something I've always wanted to do, um, which is flying planes. Um, I've been in a, a few smaller planes, but I've never really flown one or anything like that. So I figured I'd start with the Microsoft Flight Simulator that looks actually phenomenal. So this is kind of like an introduction and also the first episode of the first part of training. Um, so yeah, my goal is I would love, absolutely love to own something like a Beechcraft or something that can hold my whole family, which is a family of five. If I could get one that holds eight, that would be even better. But you know, something like that, uh, just so when we go on vacation, we can fly and just get there quicker. Uh, I think it would be amazing. Um, but this is just a big, big goal that I have. Um, so yeah, I'm going to start out just seeing how good this, uh, flight simulator is and, you know, um, sorry, my camera, I don't have a tripod right now. It broke, <clears throat> but yeah, so, uh, we're going to see how great this is. I'm hoping that it can get as good as, you know, I can learn all the, the control panel, um, all of the logistics and how to read the maps. I'm, I haven't really played, uh, the flight simulator at all or really i've had the old one but never really touched it but um i downloaded this last night the steam says i've played it for like 16 hours but i've only played maybe 10 15 minutes of it i did the first three or four things just to see how it would run and it runs really good so enough where i can stream it and show you all my progress but yeah uh, that's the goal is maybe in a year, two years, five years, as long as it takes to be able to go from doing it in the sim to actually doing it in real life, which would be amazing. Uh, I don't have much hardware right now. I do have a Quest 3, um, so eventually I will jump into VR and try that stuff out, um, but... I'm just using a mouse and keyboard for now. I am saving up for a yoke system and with the rudders and everything, you know, just so I get the actual feel of it. I probably won't go as like what most people do when they get the whole control panel and everything to control radios and things like that, because my goal is not to be a full on sim, uh, but to be able to get enough information where then I can take my written test and fly with a lot of confidence and and just uh, be able to do it easier. It'd be nice to, to if this can teach me to um, go into a written test and be like, oh, I know quite a bit of this. I've, I've pretty much done it. I'm hoping that's what this will, will help me do. And uh, But yeah, I figured, hey, might as well make this a, a vlog of my progress um so i don't know how long this is going to take me but this is day one uh, i'm going to try my best i'm not a streamer i'm not anything like that i do my background is it so i kind of get how that thing how that works but we will uh i'll try to do my best to get it going and you know if i keep doing it making it a little bit better but uh yeah again the hardware keyboard and mouse for now I'm working on getting a yoke next month is Christmas, so you never know. Um, and I the Quest 3, and then I do have, I probably won't do it till I do get a yoke system and start using the VR. I do have a Yaw VR chair, not the second generation, but the first one that's like a ball that moves. So I do have a sim chair where uh, I can feel like I'm actually floating and things like that. So I'm excited about that, but I don't want to hook that up and start streaming that till um, I get like a, a y'all system, or not a y'all, a yoke system and, and the uh, good controllers. And, you know, I, I'm not really worried about learning the, the radio commands. I'm hoping that it'll show me radio commands and, and getting get used to hearing it. But uh, I don't care about getting all that because I'd rather use that money and buy it in a real plane. 
Um, but that's my goal. Um, and my, I, while flying, I might change my mind, but right now just by just going to like what's for sale out there, I kind of like the, uh, the idea of like the twin propeller, uh, Beechcraft style planes, just so I can have my whole family, uh, or at least five people. Um, so me and my wife and then the three kids in the back, just something like that. Uh, they're expensive, but, um, I got to do a save, 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 save. And, you know, one day it could maybe work out. So, yeah, enough with uh, that kind of introduction. Let's go ahead and get into the, I'll swap over and we'll start the first series of training. Obviously, these will be long videos because I'm probably going to do all the, tr all the first chapter of trainings or whatever it is and try to keep it all into one video. Um, but... Here we go, let's jump on in. All right, so I guess the only thing you won't see is I've already set up the game. So um, basically just to let you know what I did. Uh, obviously I'm using a mouse and a keyboard for right now. And then it asks how you want everything to be. So I did the best option for the satellite capture because uh, my internet's great here. I have fiber, one gig speed, so shouldn't be a problem I wouldn't think so let's go into I'm just gonna act like I haven't done any of the flight training because I've only done like the first three or four so let's go in here yeah I've only done 37% which is the first three so we're gonna start from introduction and basically this video will be uh, all, all of these right here so two four six eight eight little sessions uh, so let's get into it all right do this. All right, so you've got your aileron, your flaps, your rudder, elevator, and a trim elevator. I went ahead and took a picture of that just so I can memorize that because I'm going to be as serious as I can on knowing how things are. I think that's important. So you definitely need to know those, even though that's a very basic thing. Know it. I'm also running on Ultra, so we'll see how well Ultra does with um, with OBS also running. That's what I'm using to capture this. Welcome to Sedona. I'm Captain Jess Molina, and I'll be your instructor. For this lesson, we're going to start on the ground and focus on some basic concepts, fundamentals every pilot needs to know before hitting the skies. This is your plane. A classic, the Cessna 152. Take a look around it. So, some simple ones. I've already written these down, but I like to keep a note of everything just so, you know, I have it. In a simulator, anytime you want, you can easily switch to cursor mode. It's pretty plain. The cursor is handy for interacting with menus and cockpit controls or instruments. As you can see, activating the cursor also displays the toolbar. The toolbar is a quick access menu that allows you to control various aspects of the simulation. Try to find and open the basic controls panel. The basic controls panel is a useful reminder of the button layout for the devices you're currently using. Now try to find and open the camera panel in the toolbar. The camera panel allows you to access the various views and camera modes of the simulation. Go ahead and close all the panels for now. Right now, we are in the external view mode. Let's switch to cockpit view next. In, end. In front of you is the yoke, the primary means of controlling the aircraft. In the simulation, you'll be controlling the aircraft with your peripherals of choice. So let's hide the yoke for now. Uh, so, yoke, visibility. Some instruments allow multiple interactions. For example, rotating a dial clockwise or counterclockwise. In these cases, you need to lock the cursor onto them in order to interact. For example, take a look at the clock in the middle of the dashboard. Go ahead and lock the cursor on it.
Now change the clock time. You can unlock the cursor once you're ready. For now we're done with the cursor, so go ahead and hide it. Alright, as we've seen, when you want to look around you, it's easy to rotate the camera. But you can also move it freely in the cockpit to get a better view of anything you want to see. Even through a window to look outside. So move camera over left, right, up, down. Pro tip, once you find a camera position you like, you can save a shortcut to easily get back to that view anytime. that control alt and run now reset the camera to its original position then try switching to your custom one again control space it's alt one all right that covers all the main camera functions available in the simulation try to familiarize yourself with them a bit more then reset the camera to its original position whenever you're done Great. Pretty simple. Go to training menu. Now let's go to aircraft essentials. Pull it back to decrease power. 
Power is decreased. Now we'll do the same without focusing on it. Deselect the throttle. Look away from the throttle and increase power. So F3 increases. So I'm pressing F3. Set your throttle to idle. F2. Excellent. When the engine is on, you'll be able to see the power change on your RPM indicator. You'll find it on the right side of the dashboard. This tells you how fast the engine is spinning in hundreds of revolutions per minute. Next, take a look at your current speed on the airspeed indicator. It's on the left in the main instrument panel. It measures the speed in knots. To check your altitude, look to the altimeter. It's on the right side of the main instrument panel. So we got speed, how high I am. The altimeter has three heads, similar to a clock. The long, thick pointer indicates 100 foot intervals. The short, thick one is 1,000 foot intervals. And the long, thin one, 10,000 foot intervals. That's all for today. Next time, we'll see how it feels in the air. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, so familiarizing your lights. All right, so it looks like we're gonna be flying.
Turn right, toward the city of Sedona. perfect to me, but oh well. But I'll take the score. It's still an A. Alright, so now altitude. Let's see how we do on this with just the mouse and keyboard. And your 
altitude is stable. That's okay. Try to make only small adjustments to your pitch to avoid overcorrection. I got a B. I thought I did that pretty well. We'll take it. Turns and roll. I guess if a B is about as good as you can get without having an actual yoke and rudder from anything, but... are all 
also decreasing. Excellent. Okay, let's throttle back up to 2400 RPM. Altitude indicator, airspeed, meter, heading indicator, vertical speed indicator, tachometer, okay, measures in three equals thirty percent or degrees, I mean. Okay. It shows two people here, but then when you're in the plane, there's only one. It's just me. No other in this lesson, let's take a look at the relationship between attitudes and power settings. Attitude plus power equals performance. We are currently at 5,500 feet in a cruise attitude. The aircraft's nose is positioned under the horizon, and cruise power is at 2,300 RPM.
in a dangerous situation. Whoops. You probably noticed, to maintain altitude, you need to pitch the nose up. You could just keep pulling on the yoke to hold steady, but that's not really a precise means of control. Probably better to adjust your trim wheel until you don't need to push or pull on the yoke. Drag the trim down when you need to set the nose up. Drag it up to set the nose down. Try adding trim to keep us at 5,500 feet without increasing throttle.
2,500 feet. Trim the aircraft to maintain 5,500 feet. test. My attitude can be a little rough sometimes. Alright. You see my kids coming to the camera. That's just my kids.
exercise. Maintain your heading at 180 degrees, stay at 6,000 feet, and adjust your airspeed to 80 knots. Maybe murder because there's nothing else. All right, I give myself. We'll see one, two, three, four A's and one, two, three, four. So maybe a B plus on training. I'll work on it some more, but uh, that is the first, I guess, episode of this series of learning how to fly a plane. So this was the basic handling. So I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next one.